Hi guys, and welcome to my temporary server room. Well, actually, it's my uh, front toilet, but at the moment, it's where my server and networking uh, equipment is housed. So, I thought I'd give you a server room tour uh, and run over how everything works, how I've got it set up um, in my house at the moment. So, if we start where the internet comes in, it's actually from outside this room along this uh, DSL cable here into a Home Hub 5, as you can see, it's just tucked in there. So this is the main gateway to the internet um, and I've also got the 2.4 GHz band set up as guest Wi-Fi uh, access point. Um, so what this does, it basically um, doesn't go through my firewall, so it's, it's completely separate to the main internal network of the house. So anyone coming to the house can just have internet but not be on the main network. So that means it's running a DHCP service. Um, and that connects on this cable here to the back of my server. The server is here and it's a PowerEdge R610 uh, by Dell uh, and it's quite good because it's got four gigabit ethernet ports on the back. Um, it's running Windows Server 2012 R2 and acts as the network's domain controller with the DNS and DHCP services running on the internal network. So that's where all my family connect, all the devices are. So we just have a look on the front. You see I've only got one hard drive in there at the moment. Um, I need another caddy, I've just ordered one actually. Uh, and on the display, I've just set it up so I can view the temperature. Might be able to see that, I'm not sure the you can. So it says on there the air intake is uh, 23 degrees, so it's a bit warm, but it's not too bad. It's been warm, to be honest. So inside the server, um, on Windows 2012, R2. I've set up some Hyper-V machines, uh, one being PFSense, and that's my main router. Uh, so the LAN side, another socket on the back, um, has an IP address of 192.168.2.1, and everything on my internal network is part of the .2.x network. Um, PFSense also has the Snort package installed, which is my IDS or IPS, so it monitors all the network traffic going in and out to the internet and blocks dodgy websites and things like that. Okay, so the switch I'm using is a PowerConnect 2824 and you can view the unboxing video for that on my channel. Uh, this is a managed 24 port switch which all the network traffic runs through. Uh, it's the main switch on my network. Uh, and you can see on the end here, here is the connection for the PFSense, the LAN. So that goes straight to the internet, well through my server. Um, and this one here is the main connection to the server itself the Windows Server 2012 R2 with so DNS and DHCP come from here. The cable underneath, that's a virtual machine, it's running Windows 10 just for as a uh, rendering machine uh, running media encoder, that's on the server. So it's using the um, 16 threads I have to edit and render videos. This one here, as you can see it's a yellow light, you might be able to see that. Uh, that's the iDRAC card, so that allows me to connect to my server and edit settings on it when remote desktop isn't working. So on my network I've configured two wireless access points around the house. So most devices get around 60 to 100 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz band and over 100 megabit on the 5 gigahertz, so about 150 and above really. So I'm using a Home Hub 3 downstairs and a TP-Link router upstairs configured just as an access point. So these two cables here, as you see that says down Wi-Fi, that's the downstairs Wi-Fi, and this white cable here is the upstairs Wi-Fi. These two cables here go to two switches, this is upstairs, this is downstairs. The upstairs one goes to my PC and my laptop, and this one goes to um, another PC, which also has the printer in the same room, so that's on another switch. This green cable here goes to a tender router, uh, which is again configured just as a wireless access point, but this is just for my camera and monitoring system, which I'll show you in a minute. You can see these two cables here. These two ports are configured um, in a lag configuration for a NAS. I would have done that LACP, but the switch doesn't support it. Uh, as you can see, we use a Synology NAS. This is a DS214+. Plus. It's got two Western Digital Red 3TB drives in there, just in RAID 1, um, just as direct mirror copy of each other. Um, and I have tested the lag configuration. You can copy files, and if I pull out one of the connections, say this one, 
if I pull that out, the transfer keeps going, doesn't even see a drop. So the Nads in our house has all of our films on it, the music, pictures and files, just for basic file sharing and streaming around the house. I also have some devices hardwired into the switch. Uh, this one here, it says TV on it, is my Alienware Alpha. Uh, that's connected to the TV, which means I can get really fast connection speeds to the NAS for films and stuff, and the internet if I'm downloading games. Uh, this last one in the end here is the Sonos, um, which before I had this set up, it was on Wi-Fi and just kept cutting out all the time, so I'm experimenting to see if a hardwired connection actually makes any difference, and I think it does so far from what I've seen. And this final cable here just allows me to connect to the switch uh, to configure the network. Uh, mainly I used it when it wasn't up and running, but now it's up and running, don't really need it. Uh, so it's just there in case of emergencies if anything breaks down. Now for the monitoring system I'm using, uh, I've got a Motorola Hubble camera. Uh, and this alerts me when it sees motion, or the main purpose which I'm using it for is it alerts me when the room gets too hot. So it has reached 27 degrees in here, even with the window open um, during the summer. So it's quite useful to know when the room is getting too hot, I can open the door, put some more fans in. So the camera connects over Wi-Fi, and that green cable that I showed you earlier actually goes up here to the tender router, which just broadcasts Wi-Fi for the camera itself. So obviously with wireless access points and hardwired devices, I need to get my cabling outside of this room to around the house and I've actually temporarily rigged these cables up here around the door and out the, out the door and they go upstairs and then from there they actually split off and go to the separate rooms. So that's it for my server room. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.